the time walking from your car to the building is is this horrible, dreadful feeling. It's like that scene in the movie The Exorcist, where you see the priest get dropped off by the taxi outside of the little girl's the little girl who's possessed outside of her house, Reagan, I think her name is. And, and, and there's mist coming out of the house, and there's a spotlight coming down from the, uh, the girl's window. And the, the, the priest is shrouded, and he's shadowed against his spotlight as he walks through the mist into the girl's house, this, this possessed by the devil. It's that kind of feeling, that feeling of dread and doom as you walk into this call center. Hey there, everybody. P.T. Pop here with all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back and thanks for watching my video and if you like what i do here on youtube give me the thumbs up and subscribe hit the punch the knock the subscribe button or whatever i am a call center agent i've been a call center agent off and on now for 20 years fortunately recently it's off i'm not doing it anymore i've worked in a variety of industries in call centers including telecommunications and banking as well as graphic design, a little bit of uh, cable, and a variety of other industries. So I've seen it all. Today is part two of a day in a life and a call center agent. What I wanted to do today is give you a realistic perspective of what the day in a life and a call center agent is really like. So let's just say you've gone through the interview process, you've been hired, and you've been working there for a while. Everybody who gets hired into a call center, almost everyone, is hired in a second or third shift or a middle shift. Virtually no one, unless you really have good connections inside, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you know somebody, you know the, you know the president or your, or your father works there, nobody gets to work first shift. So you get hired, you're working there for a while, and I can tell you that after a couple of weeks of being on the phones, this is how your day starts out. You wake up. And your heart is filled with dread because you've got to get in your car and you've got to drive 20 to 30 minutes to go to work. So you get up, you putz around for the day, you walk the dog, you feed the kids, you do whatever you need to do. And let's say you have to be at your shift by 2 o'clock. You jump in your car, you're ready to go by 2.15. You've got a half an hour commute and the entire time you're driving to work, you're filled with complete dread. You're, you're trying to conjure up excuses not to go into work. You're thinking of calling your boss and saying, hey, look, um, my cat exploded this morning, and I'm really shook up about it. I don't think I'm coming in. You know, you're coming up with all these crazy ideas, and the closer you get to work, the worse you feel. You pull into the parking lot. The time walking from your car to the building is is this horrible, dreadful feeling. It's like that scene in the movie, The Exorcist, where you see the priest get dropped off by the taxi outside of the little girl's, the little girl who's possessed outside of her house, Reagan, I think her name is. And, and, and there's mist coming out of the house and there's a spotlight coming down from the, uh, the girl's window and the, the, the priest is shrouded and he's shadowed against his spotlight as he walks through the mist into the girl's house, this, this possessed by the devil. It's that kind of feeling, that feeling of dread and doom as you walk into this call center. It's almost like that opening scene in Joe versus the volcano where Tom Hanks is pulling into this parking lot and all these, uh, it's gray and it's dull and it's lifeless and he's depressed and he steps out of his car and into a mud puddle and things like that. And all these people you see from your shift are just parking their cars and, and they're kind of like, blah, blah. you're just like walking into this building like zombies. It's no different than Joe versus the volcano. And you're, and the first thing you try to do is try to find a space near the door so it doesn't take you as long to walk from the car to the door because you have to be on the phones by 3 o'clock. So let's say you get to work at 2.45, you left at 2.15, you get there at 2.45. I guarantee it, if you're second or third shift, well, especially if you're second shift, I don't know, but third shift's different, but second shift, you will not find a spot by the door. So you end up parking in the auxiliary parking lot, which is usually a quarter of a mile away from the main entrance to the call set, to the call center. You make it to the front door and you're timing it because it's a quarter till and you've got 15 minutes to get from your car 
to get inside the building, to put your lunch away, go to the bathroom, and get to your desk to get logged on the computers. So it's about, let's say it's a two minute walk from the car to the front door. So now you've got 13 minutes. You get inside, you, you swipe your badge to get in the first door. <laughs> you walk in, there's a guard station. You've got to swipe your badge to get in through some electronic gates there. You say hi to the guards. They either don't respond or they respond half, half you know, half, half-heartedly. Hey, you know. And usually the security guards that you see in these places have uniforms that are two sizes too big. You know, they, they're rent-a-cops, basically. They're not really security. They're just there to watch the monitors and make sure somebody calls 911 if somebody shows up and does something scary. You walk down the hall, and you first thing you want to do is drop off your lunch pail or your lunch bag, whatever it happens to be. So you go into the break room, and you walk in, and there's always somebody in the break room when you walk in. And for me, I remember one place I worked, it was like this androgynous looking person with purple and pink hair, heavy set with Doc Martin boots on and piercings and tattoos, pouring themselves a cup of coffee. So you walk past that person pouring themselves a cup of coffee and you go to the refrigerators. There's always like a line of refrigerators at the back wall, just regular household refrigerator refrigerators and you gotta find someplace to put your lunch. So you take your lunch bag and you open the door of every refrigerator because they're all packed because the first shift is still there. Second shift is just coming in. And a lot of people leave their lunches there forever. They never take them out. So you finally find a refrigerator that has space in between somebody's Spider-Man lunch box and about a stack of five pizza boxes. You squeeze your lunch in there. And as you're closing the door, you wonder, will my lunch be here when I get off for my lunch break? Because people steal your lunches in these call centers. So let's say that whole scene took another two, three minutes. It's now, you know, like eight minutes till the hour. <laughs> so you've got to get from the break room, which is usually right across from the bathrooms. And you've got to go over to the break room and drop off everything into a locker. You've got to put your cell phone, pens, pencils, any types of paper, watches, any electronic devices, your coat. Everything has to go into a locker these days because they will not allow you to take anything to your desk because they're afraid you'll steal information from the company or from the customers, things like that. So you basically got to strip yourself of anything, including watches, and put them in this locker and lock it up. Then you've got to make your way from the lockers, which are in the, in the men's room or in the ladies' room, whichever you happen to be, <coughs> and you've got to walk all the way to your desk. And in my case, the break room and the lockers and everything are always like a quarter of a mile from the from those locations. So I'd have like another two, two minute walk to go from the bathrooms to get to my desk and to get to log in. So you get all the way to your desk and you see someone else is sitting at your desk. They're logged in and they're taking calls and you've got nowhere to sit. Person's on a live call, you don't know what to do. The clock is ticking and you gotta find some place to sit. So you're in a panic. And you see your supervisor walk by. This happened to me so many times. And you say, hey, there's somebody sitting at my desk. What do I do? And I say, hey, sorry, we had to call in a bunch of extra staff today because of the new rate plans we released yesterday. And we've got a huge influx of calls. Call volume is through the roof. Just find a place to sit. I got to go to a meeting. I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. Bye. And they walk away. They don't help you at all. Just go there. Supervisors and call centers are always, always, always in meetings. What they're meaning about, I have no idea, but they're constantly in these really private meetings. So I look around and I find a desk, but it's like 100 yards away. I, I go over there, I get logged in. But by the time I've gone through all this and found a new desk, by the time I got logged into the phones and the computers, it's one to two minutes past the hour and I'm already late. The first call drops into my headset and it's nothing like in these training videos. It's never a nice person, never a nice little old lady saying, hey, I've got a question about a couple of boxes. And, um, you know, it's never that. You know, you, you give them the good corporate greeting. Hi, this is Pete. Thanks for call calling. Come on. Hi, this is Pete. Thanks for calling. Come on, I want to lay in Morton. How may I help you today? You know.
that's always the call to start your day. And you know those are always the hardest. So as the customer begins to ring you up because your company sucks and they hate, hate your new rate plans, call in, you get a tap on your shoulder. And it's not your supervisor, it's like the floor supervisor because there's a, they always leave a floor supervisor who's supposed to be roaming the floor to see if anybody has any questions and they're never around. They're never around. They're always out smoking cigarettes or picking their ass or doing something in the stairwells that they shouldn't be doing with another rep. She taps you on the shoulder and she says, hey, Pete, when you're done with this call, can you come over to my desk? I need to talk to you. And so you, you end the call with this really friendly customer, friendly, and you go over to her desk and she's like, hey, come on in, sit down. So, you know, you've logged off your phones, you walk over there and you're sitting there like, it's not good when they call you into their desk, especially if it's not your own supervisor. And they'll say to you, like, hey, you know, I noticed you're not sitting at your desk today. What's going on? So that's what they've said to me. I said, well, I came in and there was no place for me to sit. My desk was occupied by somebody else. She's like, okay, well, just so you know, you're logged in late. And I'm going to have to let your supervisor know that you were late. And we really can't have you be late. Today is a really busy day. And I'm sorry, but we, we're going to have to write you up. I'm going to have to have your supervisor do it. And I'm like, but there was no place for me to sit. And I got here in enough time. You you kind of like sulk away from her desk after she's, you know, taking your pride and your masculinity away and just cut your knees out from beneath you. And you're, you're like, you don't want to be defeated. You're determined to make it a good day. And you're determined to forge ahead and go on. And you go back to your desk and take, put your headset on. You, you. Shovel your way through all the bullshit of all these calls, these crazy customers yelling at you about the new rate plan. And you finally get to go on a break, but your break is only 10 minutes. See, in a call center, you get one half hour lunch and you get two 10 minute breaks. And none of, none of the three are enough time to do anything. So by the time you get from your desk to the break room, two minutes have gone by. So now you have eight minutes to eat half a ham sandwich that you've brought or maybe a couple of chips go to the bathroom, call your significant other, and by the time you've done all that, it's already time to walk back to your desk. So you do all that and you go back to your desk and there'll be a sticky note in your screen. And it's your supervisor, my direct supervisor in this case, saying, hey Pete, when you come back from break, don't, don't log into the phones. I need you to come to my desk and talk to me. Okay, so you gotta log in, you gotta log in that you're back from break, but put your phone in not ready so no calls come in. So I do that, or you do that, and you go to your supervisor's desk, and they'll say to you, hey, I noticed uh, you weren't at your desk today. You're, you're sitting somewhere else, what's going on? Well, Mr. Supervisor, I told you there was someone sitting at my desk, and I, I didn't know where to log in, and you were going to a break. You were going to a meeting. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, you're aware that it's really busy right now because we released these new rate plans, and you've got to be here on time. I said, yeah, but I had to go walk to the other side of the call center, find a new desk, and get logged in there. Well, honestly, Pete, if you had planned your day around this event, our new rate plan release, you would have been here at least a half an hour before your shift started so you could be on time because you knew we were going to be ramping up the staffing because the, the call volume was going up. Well, I had no idea somebody's going to be sitting at my desk. Well... Long story short, they sit there and ream you out because of unexpected things that happened. And then they tell you, you know, you're really basically a pile of shit and you should be there half an hour early, not 15 minutes early. In traditional cases, 15 minutes early before your shift is more than enough time to take a leak, drop off your lunch, get some coffee and go log on the computers. But in this situation, I'm describing something that happened to me. It wasn't. You uh, slink away from their desk. You're like, oh man, I'm getting beat down all the time at this place. Keep in mind that around you are thousands, uh, anywhere from a couple hundred to maybe 500 or 1,000 people, depending on the size of the call center. And you ha don't really have time and have never gotten to know anybody around you. Rarely do you get a chance to talk to anyone. So you're really alone. There's nobody you can commiserate with. There's no one in the break room to talk to because everybody's on the phones. Nobody has time to talk and they don't want to talk because they'll be late getting back to their phone if they get caught up in a good conversation. So the rest of the day goes by and you have your lunch break. 
and your lunch break is the same thing. You've got a half an hour to get up from your desk, walk to the break room, eat your sandwich. You know, it's not a lot of time. It's not enough time to go anywhere to get dinner. So, so let's say you came into the call center and you forgot your lunch and you're like, fuck, I forgot my lunch. Well, you, you don't have any choice but to eat stuff out of the vending machines because you don't have time to drive 15 minutes away to go to McDonald's or to go to Burger King or go to wherever. And you can't order a pizza because it takes like 40 minutes to get a pizza. And you can't order the pizza from your desk because you don't have your cell phone because it's in a locker. So you're screwed. And if you've forgotten your lunch, you, you just have to eat Doritos and peanuts and maybe a, a you know, a ginger ale or something. So you um, get back to your desk. You log back, back in after half an hour of eating half a ham sandwich or whatever it is. And you take calls for the rest of the day. And sometimes between that time and the end of the night, your supervisor, if he or she is still there and hasn't gone home, because most of the time my supervisors on second shift would go home because they were on the mid shift, <laughs> which was like from noon to eight, or, or it was from 10, 10, wait, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 to 6. So by the time you had been there, you had been there for three hours, they would be gone. But if they stayed, they'd call a team meeting and they'd bring you into a boardroom and they show it in this Cube Smart video. You go, go to the boardroom and it's usually a big oval table with about 12 chairs and it's nicely lit and everybody's, you know, all the team, you know, the team captain comes in, you know, there's always a team captain and then there's the, there's the team supervisor and maybe the call center director will be in there like, hey, everybody, let's talk about the new rate plans we just released and the kind of call volumes we're having. You know, it's a it's a rah-rah session. Everyone's like, uh-huh, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, I get it, man, you know. But in these meetings, like, hey, you're part of a team. You know, it's what you do, what you put into it is what you'll get out of it. And if you have a good smile on your face, that smile, smile, it'll show through those phones. You'll come shining through the phones and show the customers that you really care about this new rate plan change. It's it's like so much bullshit because they have these team meetings and, and they don't really do anything. They they talk and talk and talk. And it, the only good thing about it is it gets you time off the phone. You can log out of your phone and, and you're just time away from the customers. And usually the meetings only last about an hour. And I can tell you this, that what they depict in most of these promotional videos for these corporations, as far as the calls you're going to get, are all lies. You just get these horrible people, these people that have what we call phone balls. And they get real bold and ballsy over the phone. And they threaten you and they call you every filthy name in the book. You get through the rest of your day and it's time to go home and you're like, oh, thank God I, I can go home. And you get in your car you don't want to say anything to anybody. You just go straight to your car. You turn on the radio. You roll down the windows. And like when I went, in, went lived in Arizona, and I worked at Verizon, I'd go home to 202, and I'd hit, I'd hit the 10 and go south on the 10 and go to Riggs Road. Well, sometimes I'd be so much in a daze, I'd drive right past the Riggs Road exit. And I'd end up in 25 miles south of my exit of Riggs Road or something like that, something crazy like that. And you get home, you know, second shift ends at 11, 11.30. If you have a half an hour lunch, you work till 11.30. You get home at midnight, your wife's in bed, the kids are in bed, the dogs are asleep, the cats are asleep. You never see your family. You never see your family. Y your typical day at the call center is drudgery. It's dull. It's it's overwhelming. It's so many negative things that I don't even know how I can put it into, into words. <clears throat> You're mistreated by the supervisors. You're abused and taken advantage of. The customers rip you apart all the time. The money is poor. The benefits stink. And you're kind of left just being a nobody. You're, you're, you're the low man on a totem pole. I, I would think the call center rep is even lower than, than the the cleaning people that come through on third shift and clean out the bathrooms and empty the, empty the waste cans. And I can tell you right now that everything you see in these call center videos is absolute lie. 
because they're just trying to seduce you into thinking it's a great place, that it's fun, that it's exciting, that it's something you should want to do, and you'll be happy to be at SureGuard or you're happy to be at QSmart or Verizon or AT&T, whatever it happens to be. So there you have it. That's, that's part two because that's the reality of the call center. It's drudgery, it's dread, it's depression, it's, it's getting beat down, getting emasculated, being degraded by everybody involved in the picture. And you don't make friends there unless you've already had friends. There's no time to make friends with anybody. So take care. Hang in there if you're in a call center. Have a good day. Bye.